Happening now, a story we first broke. The man who admitted to killing a pit bull speaks out exclusively to WNY News Now. And a fatal DWI crash in Cattaraugus County. And I'm Dakota Hunter in the First Defense Weather Center. Well, it's still chilly today, but at least it's not as windy as it was yesterday. We had snow last night, and it looks like that will continue over the next several days. We'll talk about it coming up. You've had a lot to say in the past 24 hours. Be heard and comment in our new and noteworthy segment. That's news now for Thursday, April 5th, 2018. Live and on demand from the Chautauqua Audio Works Studios in downtown Jamestown. This is your source for breaking news. WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us. Good Thursday to you. It's 27 degrees with sunny skies. You're looking live at the JCC Dorm Skycam. A rundown of the stories you need to know is moments away. But first, we turn to Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter with a look at our weather. Pretty windy yesterday, Dakota. Yes, it was. Good afternoon, everybody. And boy, it was windy yesterday. We had wind gusts over 60 miles per hour uh, yesterday as well. And of course, we'll break down those uh, peak wind gusts just a little bit later on in the show. But first, let's go in there and take a look at the radar and we'll show you what's going on right now. And uh, you can see we have a few pockets of lighter snow showers coming through the southern tier right now. Now, the good news is this isn't heavy and I don't expect a lot of it to accumulate. We already had uh, upwards of about two inches in some spots already this morning from the uh, from the snow that we had overnight. But the good news is I don't think any of this will accumulate. It's just a few nuisance snow showers. Well, yeah, you know, be on the road today. So I'll be on the lookouts for that. So the forecast for you today, mostly cloudy skies on average, but there will be a chance for a few snow showers throughout the day. Temperatures still below average, 31 to 35. We should be around 50 this time of the year, just to give you an idea of where we should be. And the wind comes down west, 12 to 19 miles per hour, but it looks like the winds may actually increase once again for tomorrow. I'll talk about it in just a couple of minutes. All right, Dakota, thank you. A man who will be charged today with hanging a pit bull said that he did it because the dog became aggressive and he had to protect his children. Robert Overton said he hanged the dog named Champagne in the beginning of winter after a third incident. He admitted, though, that the dog deserved a proper burial. It wasn't just me against the family dog. When, he, when the dog got aggressive, it was me against the animal. It wasn't me against my family dog no more. It was me against the animal and protecting my family. Like I said the first time, three attacks. Three. One on my daughter. The first one was on me. The second one was on my daughter. He didn't break the skin. But he pissed her ass. I didn't think nothing of it. I let it go. Two o'clock in the morning, he got real aggressive. She got a real aggressive, excuse me. Pardon me. She got real aggressive. And I took it upon myself to put her down. Now, Overton refuted that he has had a history of violence against animals, saying only that he had cared for many pit bulls during his lifetime. He added that during a recent stint on parole, dogs were therapeutic in helping him not violate the terms of his release. We'll have much more coming up in our new and noteworthy segment where we want to hear from you. In other news, an Olean man is facing vehicular manslaughter charges after sheriff's deputies say he was involved in a fatal DWI crash on Route 417 near Windfall Road on Wednesday. Police say 47-year-old John McStraw was driving drunk and without a license when he attempted to pass a semi-truck. McStraw then hit another vehicle, killing a 48-year-old man whose name has not been released. McStraw is charged with vehicular manslaughter, DWI, first-degree aggravated provided unlicensed operation and multiple other traffic offenses. And Jamestown police say a traffic stop late Tuesday night in the area of Forest and Parther Avenues led to several charges against a woman. 37-year-old Kristen Nelson of Jamestown was reportedly driving a vehicle with a suspended license when she stopped short when she was stopped shortly before 10:30. Officers said a search of the vehicle resulted in the discovery of equipment and packaging materials commonly used in the trafficking of drugs. 
Now, Nelson was allegedly in possession of methamphetamine, suboxone, a glass pipe, and reportedly tried to get rid of it all while she was being booked into city jail. She was arraigned on Wednesday and released on bail. She's due back in court on Monday at 10.30. New York State Senator Catherine Young continues her fight to remove potentially deadly guardrails from New York State roads in light of a fatal car accident in November of 2016. The senator announced on Wednesday that her office has secured $375,000 to reimburse localities for the cost of removing and replacing x light guardrail products. Young's fight to make roads safer come after a 17-year-old Fredonia native, Hannah Emmers, struck an x light guardrail while driving on Interstate 75 in Tennessee in 2016. The guardrail pe penetrated her car, killing her instantly. Now, 43 locations in the highway system statewide were identified as having x light products. The senator's office now says that they've all been removed. And some good news to tell you about, Washington Middle School recently celebrated International Day of Happiness by creating a happy axe wall at the school. The school says every student had the opportunity to write notes for the wall during their English language arts class. Now, parent volunteer Lucy Schultz started the day at Washington School and the Builders Club helped uh, volunteer by posting those messages throughout the school on the walls and passing out Happy Axe bracelets. Now, this all started back in 2017 when Jeff Olson presented the idea in front of the United Nations after an uh, International Day of Happiness and he started a hashtag as well. Now, every year on March 20th, people celebrate happy acts walls across the country and internationally. Pretty cool. Good for them. Coming up on the other side, we're hearing from you. Let us know what you think about these stories and more in our new and noteworthy segment right after this. WNY News Now is sponsored by Chautauqua Audio Works, 3335 South Roberts Road in Fredonia. More than a music store. Call 679-4333. Call now, 679-4333. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at PhoneZoneShop.com. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to News Now. It's now time to hear from you in our new and noteworthy segment, Ryan joins us now. Man, we had a we had a late night last night uh, covering a, a story <laughs> you, that's you think? captivated this community for sure. Yeah, can I tell you the backstory behind that interview? And I think people would be very interested in this. So we had a source that came to us and said, "I can hook you up with an interview with uh, Robert Overton." We had been hearing Overton's name all day, Justin, as uh, we have a great community of supporters and and uh, viewers, listeners. Uh, that really want to see the news get out there and we're very thankful to each and every one of you. So this source told me to go to Overton's house at 52 Liberty Street and immediately upon stepping into Overton's house we were asked to turn off our cell phones. Well I was mic'd up because Overton is a multiple time felon, just got out of prison, arson, criminal weapons convictions in his jacket. Yeah. So we were still mic'd up because if something would have happened to us, we would have needed evidence that we were in the house and just trying to interview this guy. So we were, uh, myself and Matt Hummel, forced to turn our phones off. So we turned our phones off and he said, you can ask four questions. I, I negotiated to five questions. So I got the fifth question in and you know, they weren't the best questions, but they started the ball rolling about the conversation about animal cruelty and whether Overton's right or wrong. I don't know if he's guilty or not guilty, but I will tell you that his criminal jacket 
includes multiple violent felonies that are very disturbing to say the least. I was encountered by a woman outside the Jamestown City Court that told me some crazy things about Overton that I don't want to repeat. However, if you want to follow me on Twitter, go right ahead right. at sure to cover because <laughs> this is a family tweet. show. We had some crazy right. conversations in the newsroom, but this is a very important conversation that we need to continue to have about animal cruelty and the wellness of our community and now people are reacting right. and and it's just pouring right in. i mean there was like what 300 plus comments on on our facebook live video the full interview right. with overton i know we played a clip of it during our news rundown um and it seems like the majority what my takeaway is the majority of people are very much outraged and rightfully so. They're pissed. Yeah, they're pissed right because they so. believe that Overton's a liar. Yeah. Uh, they believe he and manipulated the interview. And story contradicts himself. If you watch the whole thing, we yeah. aired it in its integrity yeah. because we wanted to show to you and and, and to be fair to Overton, you yeah. know, that was what he agreed on um, the the set terms of the interview. Yeah. So we're we're being very fair. And and, and this is. Um, you know, the criminal justice system is not always fair, especially in New York right. State where you see drug dealers get off who allegedly sold drugs to people that have died, and we've gone round and round with that. And the hardworking men and women of law enforcement find it very difficult to continue to do their jobs, especially, and I said it yesterday, especially when the prosecutor's office continues to screw up cases by getting mistrials and doing procedural errors that the judge feels uh, the cases need to be thrown out. That's neither here nor there, and I digress. I will say this. If this case is not prosecuted successfully, I, for one, will beat the drum on the resignation for DA Patrick Swanson because this case needs to be prosecuted if it indeed is true. If Jamestown police right. are, are indeed accurate about their investigation, they seem very set on this suspect who we're now reporting is Robert Overton. They have not released a name. We have to preface that. They will release it in about 45 minutes, Justin, but I will say this. The community wants justice. They want something to be done and they want this animal registry, which we don't know if it's going to work or not, enacted so that we can get animal abusers on a registry just right. like we have sex right. offenders. Right, and, and let's, t let's take a look at the comments for a second. Dave Norberg says, ban him from ever having animals again. And that's indeed what George Borello's registry is for. Right. And where that is right now, well, it's tabled in the county legislature. Until April 25th. Right. Um, now, the question is, let's say that Obviously, it's going to take a little while for Overton to, you know, face these charges in a court, whether he's convicted or not. Right. That is up to the court, up to a jury. But um, whether he would be one of the first people on this list is very interesting I'd because he might be. I know lawmakers would like to see this backdated to the point where Overton's actually on the right. list. That's probably the least of his concerns if... The sentencing guidelines fall in line with his criminal history. He may be going to state prison again, which would indeed set that perpetual cycle. This guy's 50. He's born in 1970, so he's almost, what, 50 years old, 30. Yeah, he's about 47, yeah, yeah. 48 years old. So he's almost 50 years old. I don't know. I'm, now I'm hearing that the charge is aggravated animal cruelty which is a felony. I'm not sure about that charge. I heard it from another reporter in the courthouse. So we'll get the specifics right. on the charge again in 45 minutes right. when we talk to Captain Robert Samuelson of the Jamestown Police right. Department. Now that is at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. We will, um, if we can Facebook Live a conversation, we most definitely will with you. If we cannot, if police are just uh, releasing the information, we will have it to you as quickly as we can on this program, uh, Rosella seems to think that he's hiding something and she says jail time and that might possibly where, be where he will end up. Well, the admission of him killing the dog was evident. He admitted right. to us last night right. he killed it. Now, whether a jury is going to buy that in Chautauqua County, probably not because this is a county that loves animals. This right. is a county right. that is so much more in love with their animals sometimes than their own children. Right. Yeah. So we'll see. I, my, I think my mom loves our two dogs <laughs> more than me sometimes. That's why she puts you on the back porch <laughs> right, right. after I get, dinner. I go in the doghouse. Uh, final comment we'll look at during this segment. Uh, Eva Rose says take all his dogs away before something else happens to them. And He uh, told us he didn't have any more animals. Yeah, that's, he did. And he that's, did tell that's us he very, didn't have any more animals. So whether that's right or wrong, right. I don't know. He, and again, I guess to, to show, I know we have 
pictures. I, I know we haven't really been showing them here, but we did during that last report. He did submit a number of pictures to us. They just cut it. There. So he did submit a number of pictures to us, you see here. Um, so whether, we, we, we can't confirm whether those are the, the pit bulls or No, we can't. Question. That dog's beautiful, um, though. Look at his eyes. Absolutely. And, and, and these are beautiful animals. And beautiful. The dog, I found it interesting, Justin, during the course of our conversation, and this was on tape, and you could continue to comment. Right. We welcome the comments even right. after the show ends. Right. But he told us that the animal was actually a boy and then retracted that very quickly and said right. a it girl. Was, it was off. Yeah, so right. we don't know right. whether Champagne even existed. We don't right. know if Champagne was a boy or a girl. So those are the specifics. I want and to know Chris, why Chrissy Chris says, what do you mean? He confessed. Yeah, that's right. But Chrissy, just because he confessed to something legally, he has to be sentenced by a jury and a judge in order for it to go into effect. So conversation continues. I hate to cut you off. Yep. Um, after this break, Dakota's forecast then we're back with your comments, and of course at 1 o'clock we'll have much more. Stay with us. We'll be right back. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. It's tax time, so get to Express Bike and Auto in Jamestown for all of your vehicle needs. Service, inspection, vehicle sales, they do it all. For all of your automotive, motorcycle, and ATV service needs, Express Bike and Auto even offers financing. Your true one-stop vehicle shop is Express Bike and Auto in Jamestown. They're located at 1761 Foot Avenue Extension next to Quick Fill. Express Bike and Auto in Jamestown. Stop looking, start saving today. I just love to be with the dogs and I like to do them one at a time. They don't wait for five hours in my shop. We have full groom, which includes everything from A to Z, nails, of course brushing, tri any trimming that needs to be done. I do offer teeth brushing, which is a little extra. So if he takes me two hours, it's $40. If he takes me three hours, I still keep it down. As long as the dog comes back happy and not at the door, I'm happy. Now, your first defense forecast with Dakota Hunter. Well, welcome back to News Now. And boy, it was a very windy Wednesday out there, wasn't it? Here's a look at some of the peak wind gusts from across the area. Batavia in Genesee County had a peak wind gust of 75 miles per hour. That's Category 1 hurricane force. Youch! Man, very windy. Fredonia officially 68, 64 in Dunkirk, 63 in Buffalo. And officially in the city of Jamestown at the airport, they clocked 54. So, man, it was windy. I see Justin raising his hand back there. Yes. Yes. What are we, class? You don't right. have to raise it. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I just, just butt in. There's no need to raise interrupt yes. him. I want to let him know that I'm going to butt in. But when I was driving back from the, the George Borello's tour in Westfield, yes. I legit had to go like 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. Yeah. Because it was so windy on 394. I yeah. thought I was going to lose control of my car. Yeah, I mean, it was. It bad. was. And I, I have mean, a low profile vehicle, too. Yeah. So I, got a, I, got a, I got a little Chevy Cruze. I mean, yeah. geez. And I mean, <laughs> Crazy. you know, yeah, I mean, you know, those winds were insanely strong yesterday. So, man, you really had to slow down, especially on the roads, because it doesn't take much to, you know, to create some drifting out there and to make you lose control of your car. And because of the strong winds, we had a couple of pictures that came into the damage. Take a look at this tree that came down. It looks like this is in our front yard. And of course, we always thank you for sending in your pictures. This is uh, from Judy. And again, this is just, you know, an example of some of the damage. And here's one you can kind of see here that a tree kind of snapped in half and fell almost in front of her front porch. So goodness gracious, uh, the winds were definitely strong out there. And of course, you always could have just send in your weather photos on Facebook or on Twitter. That's my Twitter handle right there. And uh, I actually took this next picture last, uh, I actually took this yesterday. You can see that because of the strong winds that was creating some blowing snow so as you were driving out there especially in some of the snow bands you couldn't really see very far because the snow was really coming down i mean it, you know the snow wasn't heavy it was so much the wind that was blowing it around and one more shot how about this because of the strong winds we had this on lake erie take a look at that that is 
Yes, that is like that's, yeah, that's downtown off, Buffalo. Yes, actually. that is downtown Buffalo. You can see here's one Seneca Tower uh, right, yeah, right here. There. Uh, that's uh, Jeez, one Seneca Tower right nuts. here. This is the oh, that's my apartment Skyline. up there in the top left hand corner of Seneca oh, Tower. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's I remember. Saturday that. night. Oh, and, yeah. again, this, <laughs> and again, this is an example of of you know what we've seen on Lake Erie with those strong winds creating some pretty high waves out on Lake Erie. And of course, that was the reason why that Lakeshore flood warning uh, was in effect yesterday because of this crashing up across the bake walls, the break walls. So again, yeah, very windy out there yesterday. Now, getting into the actual forecast here. Now, I was telling you about this last month, how it looked like the first week of April was going to be colder than average. And so far, that has been the case. And according to the Climate Prediction Center, they have us at a 45% chance for seeing below average temperatures over the next six to 10 days. So this cold spell looks like it's going to continue for at least another week or so. So yeah, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to get used to it. I'm, I, I'm terribly sorry. It looks like Ryan wants to say something. No. Okay. <laughs> you know, I seen his hands going up in the air. I didn't know if he wanted to butt in here. But hey, it's Thursday. We're looking into the weekend. Here's your weekend planner. And you can see pretty much for Saturday, partly cloudy skies, chance for a snow shower, 30 to 35. And then on Sunday, we'll see some partial sunshine, but that's not going to help too much. Temperature still below average. We're going to go 32 to 37. And uh, boy, it's just going to be cold once again. And it will continue. Live look at uh, downtown Jamestown from the HD News Now cam. You can see we have the clouds just kind of socked in. And look at the flag on top of the Digital building. It's kind of flying there in the wind. It's currently 27 degrees at the Jamestown Airport. We have a wind chill of 16 when you combine it with that west wind of 14. And uh, eight mile visibility out there because some of the light snow that's falling uh, is kind of creating some limited uh, visibilities out there. Now on Doppler Vision, you can see there's that scattered lighter snow showers uh, that's kind of coming through the southern tier right now. Again, nothing too heavy. I don't really think this is going to accumulate too much. It looks like more accumulating snow might come our way probably tomorrow. So what can you expect for tomorrow? Town by town. And uh, you can see temperatures really cold here. We're going to go pretty much upper 30s. And then once you go near the immediate Lake Erie shoreline, temperatures will be in the lower to mid 30s, way below average. And the wind comes up again, west 21 to 32. And uh, so I would not be a bit surprised if we see some sort of a wind advisory issued for tomorrow because the winds come up again. But the good news, it won't be as windy as it was yesterday. That's the good news. Probably less than an inch of snow accumulation there. Then as we work out eastward, you can see temperatures pretty much in the uh, upper 30s here. Once again, cold, windy, and snowy will be the story for your Friday. Let's take you through future scan. You can see here the model picking up on a few rain and snow showers. Then it looks like as we go throughout the later afternoon going into tonight, it looks like it breaks apart. Probably mostly cloudy skies for tonight. That's the good news. But as we go into wee early morning hours tomorrow, here comes snow that's going to infiltrate the region for the morning commute. So again, you're probably going to see some snow, uh, you know, as you head out the door when you go to work tomorrow morning. So again, you know, it's almost just like this morning. Don't be surprised if you see another inch or so of snow for tomorrow. And then it looks like tomorrow the snow will actually start to change over to rain showers uh, for the afternoon. So that's at least the good news. But there will be snow. Nevertheless, it will still be cold out there. Now, how much more snow are we looking at here? Again, probably about around an inch, almost almost what we had today, around another inch or so of accumulation. Not much there. You can see the probe there going around uh, showing you the snow total. So not a whole lot there to really speak of. Let's talk about the future. The next seven days of your life are coming up. Brought to you by Quick Solutions. And uh, boy, oh boy, it's just chilly once again. But hey, at least 34 degrees. That's still cold. And then uh, it looks like we go into the 40s for the early part of next week. But yes, we should be around 50 this time of the year, and we just won't see that anytime soon. We will take a quick break, and News Now will continue right after this. First Defense Weather is sponsored by Quick Solutions of Jamestown. Count on Quick Solutions for printing, copying, mass mailings, and so much more. Part of your team. Learn more at QuickSolutionsUSA.com. That's QuickSolutionsUSA.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. The Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. Everything's made fresh here. We love to be outside, uh, and it's nice inside if it's raining, so we have a choice. Locals and non-locals agree that the Main Landing is quickly becoming a destination. It's just so casual, and just the food is amazing. Uh, I love the hamburgers. But I really like the tuna I had. The Main Landing Restaurant. Excellent service, awesome food, and a beautiful view. And welcome back to News Now. Barbara is chiming in on the conversation. My dog is like a kid. I 
totally agree, Barbara. Eva Rose says, you can't kill a dog. They're like family, or should you say they are family? That seems to be... Can I chime in real quick? Yeah, I, I don't know. As a, as a guy that has a kid, I don't know if a dog is like a kid. You don't, you don't think so? No, no. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because, um, and some of the men out here can attest to this, there is, um, there's nothing like the birth of your first child. Anybody that's ever been through that, I would say, and, and this is not a popular opinion, but I've never taken the popular track in the city. Um, I would say that a lot of these people that are chiming in about this probably don't have kids. Let us know, do you have kids? Yeah, because- and dogs? There's nothing like, when I held my son at WCA for the first time, um, the, the magic of that was incredibly powerful. It's an incredibly powerful experience to hold your child in your arms and, and all the things that you want for them or don't want for them come to the top. Right. And, and you ask yourself this, if you're comparing a dog to a kid, are you taking good care of your children? Right. I, I'm just throwing it out there because right. A lot of times we say well, uh, dogs are like family, and they are right, because they're around right. all like, the time. I can attest to like when my uh, we had a dog named Lady, and she got hit by by a car, um, and I was like fourteen, and it was sad. I mean, I don't thank God, you know, and, and God bless me for 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 what I'm about to say, but it's not like I lost my sister. But I did lose a part of the family, and we were sad for a while. If something happened to Luna right now, right you would be really messed up in the right, head. If right. something happened to your sister right now, you'd be out the door right. and you know it. Right, or, right, 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 right. So, I absolutely agree with your, with your analysis of it. It's not, it's not the same value as a human, but it's pretty damn close. It, yeah, you're right, it is pretty damn close. And, and we place an unhealthy emphasis sometimes. I see these people holding kids like the dogs. A lot of times, people that can't have children will have dogs will have dogs right. and, and they right. take them in there's a commercial out there and real quick there's a commercial out there and it says fur babies set you up for having real babies and it's like a a nationwide commercial yeah. uh, it which sets nice. the tone for having children right. which is nice because you have that responsibility right. right a 20 year old you know couple say that you know they're dating they might get married one day it's good for them to have a dog or a right. cat or family something. court does not right. include pets but you're right about that. And that's where the law sits. Right. And the question is, should it include pets? Probably not, in my opinion, probably not. Yeah, I, I don't and, uh, think we should place the same let, value on pets as we else. do human beings. Let's have yes. something else like Borello's law. Correct. So, what do right. you think about all this, Dakota? You, just the weather, man, but. <laughs> no, he's part of the team. He's part of the team. Well, you know, I had, um, well, I had a couple pets uh, throughout yeah. my lifetime. I had, well, my first pet actually was a cat. Uh, we had her for, goodness, 16, 17 years, mm -hmm. something like that. And then, of course, I had a gerbil. Um, Everybody I, loves gerbils. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't even know gerbil? why. No. I, I, I was scared gerbil. of gerbils. They're annoying. They're very annoying. And they're disgusting. Well, they they smell bad. you got to clean well, their cages or else. Well, you know, you got to... Somebody might want to answer that. Sounds like somebody's phone's ringing. Uh, we yeah, are. It's, Ryan's popular. <laughs> yes. Call him. He's yes. He's the popular you can, dog. In Ryan's the house. cell phone number is seven zero eight. Da 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 da. I I'm getting. I just. I swear. I just got a call from CNN. You think so? I I know I did because the lady follows me on Twitter. Hmm. The, the, well, if this, they call back, then we this know case CNN. is getting. This case will. Unfortunately for Overton, and I'm not here to assess guilt right. or innocence, right. but they may make an example out of him. And again, listen to me, folks. If the prosecutor can't prosecute this case, he should resign effective immediately. There is no more room for any more errors. They're dealing with your right. future, your future, our future, the children, our, our future. And if we continue to have mistrials of convicted criminals, suspected criminals, in cases where people are actually admitting guilt on tape, we should have the prosecutor disbanded from the office. All right, real quick, can we take, yeah, there we go. Uh, Carl says, I have two kids and two dogs, and my dogs are nothing like my kids. Dogs are more of like a friend, hence the saying, man's best friend. Last I checked, that saying doesn't go far for your kids. Th that's what I'm saying, Carl. That, and, and Carl can attest probably, there's nothing like holding your, your first son or daughter in your arms. Right. 
Conversation continues at WNYNewsNow.com. Of Great course, conversation at today. 1 o'clock, we will have much more from Jadestown Police. Stay tuned there. Stay tuned here on Facebook Live. That's it for us today. We will see you right back here on News Now tomorrow at noon. Have a great one. See you tomorrow.